Royal Ascot is one of the biggest meetings of the year. It's always a meeting that I've done very well at, and there are lots of detail and information that you can learn to give you a heads up in terms of how you are likely to trade Royal Ascot. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get instant notification of new videos as they're released. So immediately, um, I've got a couple of little things for you here. Uh, in fact, let's do three of them. Uh, the first thing is, uh, I got told off once when I was at Ascot for calling it Ascot. And apparently it's supposed to say Ascot. So yeah, if you ever go to Ascot, say Ascot and not Ascot. There you go. Slightly pretentious, I think, somewhat. <laughs> Um, but also, the funny thing about uh, going to Ascot, if you ever get the chance to go there, is that um, you very often can't log on to gambling sites. And uh, it was the same, I went there once to meet up with somebody and show them Bet Angel and the concept, and I couldn't actually log on to our own sites to download the software, which was a bit of a problem. We did fix that, but it was very notable that you can't actually log on to a lot of websites at uh, Ascot. The other thing to note as well, uh, while we're in that frame of, uh, in that mode, is that when we have a major football championship on, that tends to have an impact. And I, I have had that feeling before because I've traded Ascot um, in 2010, uh, 2012, uh, 2014, and now of course 2016. And I've noticed that there is a bit of a tail off. There's a dispersion of activity. And you know, the big issue that we've got at Ascot next week is that the Gold Cup is going to clash um, with the England v Wales match. So it'd be interesting to see what happens um, during that particular period. But you notice that the, you get, the football markets get a major boost when there's a, a summer to tournament on, like the Euros or the World Cup. And it does tend to drain liquidity out of other markets. Uh, people's attentions are diverted and um, necessarily that impacts all of the other markets. So that's going to be playing into the mix a little bit next week. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how all of that actually ends up playing out. Um, but I went back through all of the data over previous years and you can see uh, the markets dip a bit when there is a major football championship going on. Ascot itself tends to do about sort of um, 50 to 80 million or thereabouts uh, is what you'd expect to see over the week. Over the course of a day, that equates to 10 to 15 million a day. It runs from Tuesday to Saturday. And um, what you tend to find is that the liquidity tends to be pretty good, but it tends to rise and fall according to the sort of racing that's going on. So on the Tuesday, unusually, uh, we have a much bigger uh, week. You know, we start the week with a bang. I usually say at most of these major meetings to sort of ease yourself in and start sort of building and understanding how the markets are going to go on. You don't really get that chance at Ascot because Tuesday we've got three group ones and uh, it's you have to hit the ground running. You really have to hit the ground running. So what's actually typically what I do is all of the meetings that run up to Royal Ascot, I really work incredibly hard to try and understand exactly what I need to do. And um, I'm adjusting strategies slightly, you know, being maybe slightly more or less aggressive and so on and so forth. So the Derby and the Oaks for me act as the precursor to Royal Ascot. So all of my strategies and everything I'm refining carefully uh, at the Epson meeting. And then on Tuesday, I'm going to hit the ground running. So there's none of this pussyfooting about and looking for um, you know, little trends and ideas within the market. I don't tend to use the Tuesday to practice. I'm just straight in there. So you tend to find over the course of the week, Tuesday's a, a big day, um, and then it sort of uh, moves down a little bit and then peaks again as we head towards the end of the week. But also um, what you tend to notice is that the Saturday at Ascot isn't typically as good as some of the other days during the week because there's loads of other racing going on and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's, you know, we're expecting to have a big week. The average turnover in a race is around sort of the two to three million mark. Um, it tends to be slightly towards the lower end of that because what you tend to find is you get the feature races coming onto the card and then you have a couple of things topping and tailing it, which pull down the average overall liquidity. But you can reach some, some big numbers. I've seen races hit 10 million uh, when the favorite is at very short odds and heavily gambled. And that can often uh, produce pretty significant volume. So yeah, the volume's a little bit lower than maybe perhaps you're suspecting, but it's still very high in comparison to other things. So it's a, it's a week where you really have to go for it because 
if I hit the week well and you know and I'm motoring and uh, in the zone then I could probably do four times as much during ASCA week as I can do on pretty much any other week so it's like a month's worth of trading for me in five days or so so yeah it's significant and um, as a consequence it's uh, worth a lot of effort and a bit of prepping and understanding what's in front of you and so forth if you want to have a, a, an idea of things that can happen at Ascot, I did a great video last year on a situation that occurred that could occur again this year. And um, what I suggest is if I lean over here, um, the video will mysteriously appear over in this corner. Have a look at that video as well as this one if you want to get a handle on a couple of angles that you can take, which will give you an indication as to uh, things that could happen at Ascot that could put you in with a great chance of absolutely you know hitting a slam dunk of a trade during the meeting it, I've mentioned it before on other videos but there are common themes that often run through these sort of meetings in certain situations so it's worth a good look but um, what I'll do is I'll, at the end of this video I'll attach um, something looking at uh, the spreadsheet uh, from Ascot so you can get an idea of how the week is likely to pan out because there are subtle differences between each day and I think it's worth appending that to the video rather than me just read it to you. It's probably better if I do a screen recording of the spreadsheet and just talk you through a couple of little items in there so that you can understand how that is best uh, positioned. So anyway, best of luck with Royal Ascot Week. It should be a big one. And if you've looked at Cheltenham and you've looked at the Guineas and you've looked at the Derby, um, then it should be good prep for how Royal Ascot is likely to feel. And once Royal Ascot is out of the way, there are other meetings, uh, but we don't sort of hit exactly the same sort of height as we do at Ascot for a little while. So it's probably time to settle back into a conventional sort of mode uh, once Ascot is finished. But certainly while it's on, you need to go for it because it's a big meeting, loads of money there, and there's a potential uh, to make good money as well if you're well prepared and you've got some decent strategies to deploy. So anyway, best of luck with Royal Ascot. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, I thought I'd have a look at turnover at Royal Ascot. And what you can see here is um, I've also highlighted the years where there were football tournaments. So you can see 2010 World Cup in South Africa, 2012 Euros, 2014 World Cup in Rio. But if you actually look, uh, turnover declines um, when a World Cup is on, or the Euros and then it rises the year after. Now some of this will be masked by underlying characteristics of the, the particular market and the tournament and so on and so forth. But you can see there is a, a trend for that to happen. What happens this year? It depends upon underlying growth in the market and so on and so forth. But you would have to guess that probably it will be slightly weaker. You can also see I've ordered it by Tuesday to Saturday. So you can see necessarily that the Tuesday it is the busiest day on average and then you can see the rest of the week is pretty similar in terms of uh, what occurs over the course of that week some of this is determined by the price of the runners because obviously if you have a short priced favorite it will attract more money so that is the distorting factor that you tend to see within the market in fact what we could do is we could actually go over and have a look at some of the individual markets and you can begin to see that characteristic play out. But initially, there's your overview of basically uh, what Royal Ascot tends to look like over the course of the week. Now, if we dig a bit deeper into the individual weeks, you can see how these characteristics play out. So on Tuesday last year, we had four group ones, uh, not four group ones, three group ones in a group team, four group races. We had four on Wednesday as well, but you can see only one of those was a group one, and then you can see the pattern repeating as we go through the week. And that's what you see every year. So again, if we look at the year before that, you can see that there were uh, three group ones on the Tuesday, and there was only one on the Wednesday, one on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you can see how this sort of tends to play out. Now, if you look at uh, individual market turnover, you'll see that the individual uh, markets turn over varying amounts of money as well. Um, but necessarily it's the shorter price favorites. So you can see here, Trev at 166 had a market that turned over 4 million. Um, but some of the other markets got nowhere near that sort of total. 
um, but you can generally see that the shorter prices attract more money. That's just to be expected. And if we look at last year, if I just reformat this column slightly, there we go. Um, then you would expect the big races of the day to be the ones at shorter prices, which is exactly what we've got. So if I go down here and look at that, you can see odds on shot there. But when we get into larger prices, the market volume tends to be a little bit less. And you can see um, that on this particular year, we had what three races with something starting at two point something. And then the feature race, the group race, uh, necessarily does bigger volume anyway. So that is a characteristic that you'll find within the market, markets. But uh, anyway, I hope that's given you a quick overview of what Royal Ascot Week looks like, the sort of turnover you'd expect to get, and some of the characteristics that you'll see within there. Best of luck. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial.